What's up, you guys? Welcome to Fightful. It's Sean Rossap. It is January 3rd, 2024. We are here for your AEW Dynamite post-show review, and it is, it's a good one. A lot of newsworthy stuff, some slapper matches. Mm. This was a phenomenal Dynamite that featured some of my favorite stuff that they've done in a long time, if not ever. Yeah. Uh, we're going to ask you guys to leave a thumbs up on this video. Uh, share it on social media. We would greatly appreciate if you guys would do that. But if you want your questions or statements read on the air, uh, donate a super chat here at youtube.com slash Fightful. Uh, we are here doing post shows, quite frankly, every night. Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Dynamite, ROH, Collision, Impact. Uh, we're here all the time. We've got news shows multiple times a week. We've got interviews. This week we dropped Alan Angels uh, of TNA. Uh, just tons of stuff. Last week, we dropped Deanna Perrazzo's last interview before she joined AEW. I'll brag about Fightful Select momentarily, but that's also where you can find this fella multiple times a week. Uh, he'll be telling you about a new series that he has later on. Alex, how you doing? Uh, I'm I'm doing I'm doing well. Uh, this is uh, they are in the process of restoring the feeling. Um, I I am very excited for these next couple of months leading into Revolution. It does feel like they have a concrete plan for a lot of things um i i thought that the the middle of uh world's end was let's say nothing to write home about but the last few matches were really great and i am actually a big fan of where they're going with this devil thing so i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to the big the first half of of um 2024 for AEW. i am so excited just so excited uh, leave a thumbs up on this video, guys. Uh, FightfulSelect.com. $5 a month gets you, uh, quite frankly, more exclusive news than you're going to get every, anywhere. Um, and even if we don't break the news, we're going to have a ton of details for you. But in addition to that, we got Q&A shows, review shows, 40 extra shows a month over there. In addition, we also give you more free podcasts and wrestling content than any other website out there. So proud of what we, we've done uh, with Fightful and so glad to have you guys here with us. But the big story of today, Deanna Perrazzo uh, was in talks with w or with AEW. Well, she had a little bit of chatter with WWE as well, but we will be, we will be talking about that later as I get the hiccups. We have Paul saying when does fight or voting close for the Fightful Awards. I was actually telling Alex about some of the, the prospective winners uh, mm -hmm. over here. The uh, voting goes through the end of Friday. So uh, Friday night at 11.59 p.m. Eastern, the voting will close. But if you're a subscriber of Fightful Select, you'll be able to vote. Uh, thousands of votes already. And let me tell you, it is right down the line with WWE and AEW winners. Like It is right down the middle, and I'm very, very happy about that. So, uh, yeah, we'll be giving you all that stuff as well. But, man, get those super chats. Get those humper chats in. Boris says, this episode was incredible top to bottom. Such a massive reset and statement for 2024. Alex, I feel like they needed this. The last few matches of World's End uh, delivered pretty well. But I think they needed a dynamite like this. And I'll tell you what I liked about this dynamite. Uh, I'm not saying that I liked no MJF, but it was fresh. You saw the world champion right. on the show at the very mm -hmm. beginning. There was no Jericho. There was no elite. This was them relying on a lot of other people that, quite frankly, they, they have now seen that they can rely on. I loved yeah. what happened here. Um, I, 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 also, I really like that it is. it does feel like, uh, particularly because MJF was the champ for over a year, um, uh, him losing the belt and now going away, we assume, uh, for if not surgery, then a lot of rehab on that shoulder and other things. It does feel like a, a straight up reset, like it's the new season of of AEW. Um, and a cool way to do that at the beginning of a brand new calendar year. They they've they've set up a lot of stuff going forward, and we can see that there are a lot of moving parts. And I I love that that it looks like we can say that we, we have a good idea of who we think is going to be the next so-and-so champion. But there are a lot of different branching pathways that they can choose along the way, and I like that a lot. 
I'm just I'm I'm really excited to be talking about this episode of Dynamite tonight because you know the the restore the feeling thing that funny enough Daniel Garcia says all the time mm-hmm. it really did restore the feeling to me mm-hmm. this was a very like early or, or it was a a fall 2019 type of feeling right uh we've got bako 5 saying AEW hit a new gear tonight multiple and consistent stories great wrestling exciting promos and character progression things seem to be clicking before we get into this miguel sends a very generous super chat and it's thankfully uh he did that uh but <laughs> he said uh, I know it's off topic, but with the, how The Rock teased the match versus Roman, do you think it's best to have Rode, Roman Cody Knight one, to have Roman drop the belt, then have Roman Rock Knight two, have Romain, Seth, and Punk as the main? No. 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 Also, I don't know what this means. Sean Ross learning how to just, do just, it. just. Uh, I've 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 learned to just let those people scream into the void whenever they're doing something like that on my on my show. What, what what I don't know what that. What I did, guess I, I know because because I remember you reporting for sure that Mercedes was going to debut tonight. And oh, is so that you're, what the, you're, is that I, what this is? I think what, that's what this is about. Is that I, what I, this, I, that is? I think that oh. might be what they're what they're driving. Andrew, for. I beg of you, buddy. I beg of you, buddy, please comment and confirm that that's what you meant. I beg of you, buddy, please say yes, that is what I meant. Because, but, And then type your little Twitter handle into the comments. That way everybody can show you how stupid you are. Don't ban him, Luis. What are you doing, Luis? Get him back in here. Get him back in here. Bring him back. Bring him back. What are we doing here? Listen, Uh, uh, first off, I'm going to rant about media literacy. Media literacy. People say, why are you being so vague? Guess what? I don't get to look at Deanna Perrazzo's contract before she shows up. I don't get to physically watch Mercedes Monet sign her contract. Hey, here's the report. She was talking with WWE. She stopped. She's been talking with AEW. She's expected by everybody in the industry to head Mm -hmm. there. When? Well, we Mm -hmm. didn't report when. We didn't report when because I don't know the answer to that yet. But she's expected to go there. I promise you guys, you do not, do not get to choose your own adventure with what people report. And if you think this is bad, you should follow a real sport. Mm. Because last month, I was so excited for the Blue Jays, a team that is very near and dear to my heart, to land Shohei Otani. He was on a plane. He was was. on a plane. He was. Everybody said so. Everybody said he was on the plane. You know who said so? The official Major League Baseball Twitter account Mm -hmm. said so. Yes. They retweeted it. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Meanwhile, I got WWE out here calling me internet rumors. What? (laughs) That's your I'm going to hit him with a drop toe hold. Buddy. (laughs) Mm. Uh, That boy got the hell out of here. Luis hit him with the the ban hammer. But anyway, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no, I don't think that the idea of planning two Roman Reigns matches. Yeah at all is uh is the right idea and andrew says he loves to trigger me well guess what now you are banned bitch no, see ya no, no, there you go. i don't no. think you can plan two matches of that magnitude no, no, no. and expect them to go off without a hitch no. um it has been abundantly clear that wwe has not needed roman reigns as champion since wrestlemania right right i know he didn't need the belt he didn't need to win cody should have no. won then uh, the only thing that I will say of that stead is at least when he wins now, boy, are there a lot more very, very over talent for him to compete mm-hmm. against. Mm-hmm. There is, you know, Damian Priest and, and Judgment Day have oh, been yeah. over, and Gunther is Gunther and Cody sure. is a pay per view main right. event. Right. I watched The Rock get blown up after a people's elbow. Uh, agreed. And uh, 
I heard an idea today, Alex, from oh, one of our you? readers oh, yeah. that I thought was really good. Oh, yeah. Integrate The Rock into WrestleMania, but sort of as the host of WrestleMania. Hmm. Cody beats Roman Reigns for the title. Mm -hmm. And you always know how Hogan would be like, everybody was looking at me when I left and, and Warrior won, brother. No, they weren't. They they were people were very yeah. excited for Warrior to win, but Hogan right. was the guy, so they watched him. Sure. When Roman loses, there is going to be a massive focus on right. Roman. There has to be. He's the main character of the show. Right. Sure. Cody gets his big celebration, and I mm -hmm. wish I could remember who said it. And then The Rock kind of takes the lay from him afterwards. Mm. And he's like, this isn't yours. It's never been yours. Mm -hmm. He's like, I've been giving you bit parts in my movies. I've always sure. been the provider. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you set it up for some other time. I, right. I'm sorry. I cannot deal with Cody not being champion and Roman being champion unless we get some news that Roman's going to be around a lot more. That's it. Right. Uh, Roman will surpass uh, Bruno's second reign in a few weeks to become fourth mm -hmm. all-time longest reign. He will surpass Hulk Hogan in September. Let me tell you, he's definitely going to beat Hulk Hogan. They're going to keep it on him through next year's WrestleMania. I would rather him beat Rock than have him beat Cody again. So I do believe that they're keeping it on him for one more year. Uh, I would not be surprised at all if that was the case. So we'll see. We'll see. Oh, man. Somebody paid us a lot of money to answer that question. That's what shows. And this is. and I and I will. You know what? We we cover a little bit of everything, and we really thank uh, thank you guys. Um, Oscar says, "Oh, whoa!" Luis says, "Speaking of free agents, Josh Alexander called out Alex Hammerstone for hard to kill." Wow. Woo. That is Ooh, uh, that is crazy. a humpage right yep. there. Yeah. That is some holy shit. Let me, uh, oh boy. Damn. Uh, we got Oscar saying, also, y'all need to watch the AEW fight feed. Commentary during uh, Picture in Picture is God tier. Well, buddy, guess what? I do, thanks to NordVPN. I've often talked about uh, how much of a pay-per-view buyer I am. Take that any way you want it. But I'll tell you how I take it. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Fastest VPN on the planet. Global server network. All that good stuff. That's great. But a big, big reason why I got NordVPN.com slash Fightful is all the pay-per-views I buy. All the money we're spending. We're trying to control costs as a company, as a household. You can get those UFC pay-per-views at a fraction of the price you're paying here in America. Plus, you can get all kinds of great content that you wouldn't normally see thanks to those services as well. Shows that are on overseas services, things that you want to watch a little bit early so you get on that UK time and watch them. Being able to change the interfaces of things like the WWE Network, maybe you don't like Peacock, anything like that. NordVPN.com slash Fightful gives you that ability while having the fastest VPN on the planet. Also, you just get so much more out of your internet experience with NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Subscribe to, to Fight and AEW Plus. Watch AEW without commercials. Uh, watch Bare Knuckle Boxing. Watch UFC pay-per-views, boxing pay-per-views at the rates they're getting over in the UK. Change your virtual location with just one click. And hey, if you need any help using it, they got that 24-7 tech support. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Uh, we got Marco Dominguez saying, bring back media literacy, restore the feeling. I'm, I'm going to go in on that a little bit more during the Diana thing, but yeah, uh, I'm very passionate about that. And there are reasons, especially these days that we have to say things in the way that we said it. Uh, sure. Paul says fan of Nord VPN, but what country and app do I use for UFC fights? <laughs> have a hard time finding UFC specifically. Um, you know what? I've got a list of them on my PC if you can drop me a message, I'll be able to find them. But also NordVPN, uh, their their twenty four seven tech support will will help it as well, or will help you as well. Um, Australia, oh, I think I think uh, Luis is typing Australia. There you go, boy, crikey, mate! Uh, I don't like anybody from there. You know what? <laughs> don't like it. TF says, I know, I don't know if you've seen, but uh, uh, Manet's. New Japan starter <laughs> theme has been deleted on some platforms. Could this mean anything? Uh, 
I don't know if that means anything, but I can tell you that she was expected to go to AEW as of this past weekend. I mean, that's quite frankly why WWE was probably very excited to let me know that they were no longer in talks with her because they probably got a hunch that she was heading to AEW. Samoa Joe promo. I love it. It's just just a quick comment. Here he is. You're going to see him next week. All that good stuff. A, A great approach here. And this show didn't need anything that wasn't on it necessarily right. by from what I saw. I thought this was great because next week they're back home at Daly's place. I was reminded this week, this will be the first Daly's place show for a whole lot of people. And it's weird to think that that will be the case, but uh, yeah, Samoa Joe uh, will be back next week. I love this opening promo. He's great. He's uh, it, it, everything he, everything he says feels uh, completely off the cuff. I feel like most of it is improvised, but everything just feels like it's just him have, having this thought and communicating it to you. And the the but I love that even when it's not scripted, the through line of it it's always like a, a a theme. You took this from me, so I had to take this from you. Like there was this thing he 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 always crafts such a beautiful through line to all of his promos where everything is tied back to the same theme, but it always seems entirely off the cuff. I love some of Joe. I thought this went really, really great. Uh, we've got new lack city saying, what's the issue with Santana already lost his friendship with Ortiz always angry with AEW. Is it just a matter of time till he leaves? Can't see them pushing him with this attitude personally. Yeah, I think so. I I've always gotten along with Santana. And he is still there. But, I mean, I do wish that his feud with Ortiz would have gotten a better yeah. sort, a, a better light cast on it. Although it was an integral thing on Rampage yeah. for yeah. those of, of you who actually watched that. But, right. I, you know, I, I had heard a while back that Santana and Ortiz couldn't get along. They just didn't want to team together anymore. But yeah. I respect that they were like, you know what? We need to probably work together against each other yeah the devils are the undisputed kingdom uh they came out and uh they sort of quite literally did the scooby-doo they pulled off their masks revealed their evil plot and plan and adam cole's not wrong Hmm. mjf probably would have done this oh absolutely the moment that he got he he had that happen yeah Mm -hmm. yeah there's well, we'll we'll have to see what the what the rehab process for both of these guys is. How long they will both be out? But I I'm t- I I'll tell you the the ideal thing would be to somehow for them to have the grudge match at all in a year after they had that match against each other as friends, or at least Adam Cole pretending to be MJF's friend. Um, there's a lot there, and I love I I want them to be. Uh, uh, orbiting each other for years if they're both in this company to the point where MJF does turn heel again, Adam Cole can do the, I told you so. I told you so. I told you he was going to do it again. And there's a lot of cool stuff there. I think Adam Cole is very easygoing in these promos where he can be the villain. Uh, This is some cool stuff. My favorite part of all of this was um, Wardlow's been betrayed by everybody he's ever associated with, but not us. Not us. We won't betray him. We will simply ask him to secure the greatest prize in our sport and then hand it over to me when I tell him to. And I was like, okay. And then Wardlow up by like, sure, sure, I'm gonna Yeah. Do I was like, okay, cool. Wardlow's Wardlow's in it because he's he's he associates with these guys because he knows it's his easiest path to destroying MJF, who he legitimately does hate, but also. There's no way I'm giving you this title. I, I, I'm not going to Ex- touch your face for now, but but there's no way I'm giving you this title when I win it. It's great. Great. Yeah, and I mean, if you're Wardlow, you know the trial and error of being the muscle yeah. in one of these groups. Absolutely. And you have watched it unfold for five years now. Yeah. yeah. So I saw some people that were like, oh, well, they had me until this. I was like, no, th- this, is, this is Wardlow being like, uh, I I didn't even really know you guys until this. I'm the odd one out. I should be Bobby Fish or Kyle O'Reilly right now, yeah. but I'm Wardlow and I'm in this group. Um, it is pretty impressive 
how good Adam Cole is at playing a piece of shit because he is sincerely the most wonderful guy you'll ever meet in wrestling. He's the nicest guy. He really is. Uh, JP says Cole was fantastic on the mic tonight. Loved Wardlow teasing his turn already. Uh, Yeah, he's listen. He's he's been pretty clear about what he wants, and yeah. Shot I love the. Back. I also love that they named Roderick going after the international title because OC versus Roderick Strong, serious oh Roderick boy. Strong, not playing goofy Roderick Strong, is something I could really get behind. So it's pretty clear they have Adam Cole as the mouthpiece right now, mm-hmm. Roddy Strong as the international title guy. Um, you've got Wardlow going after the world title, and you've got your tag team that are the ROH tag right. team champions. Mike Bennett, another one of the nicest guys in wrestling who is very good at playing an absolute jackass. Uh, Shot Kid says, Adam Cole is clearly giddy to be AEW's version of Handsome Jack from Borderlands 2, his favorite mm. video game character. Uh, speaking cool. of, there was a big tease on about WBD today, and I was told it's not wrestling related, it's likely video game related or something of mm. that, that, okay. that like. Um, guys... We are not going to discuss like uh, allegations and all that type of stuff on this show. We've covered that ad nauseum. So if you send a super chat about that, you can uh, uh, send something else. Uh, We will cover that on something that isn't a general show review like this. And we covered it on World's End. We covered it on Monday. We covered it on In the Weeds. We have covered it exhaustively. Yeah. Uh, Brent Lockman says, Cole is finally getting to involve his handsome inner Jack. Yep, that, that's so. It's a, man, we got multiple of those, right. and it's one of those situations where I think that him sitting in the chair works really, really well. Yeah, it honestly, really does. Uh, I like. It, I like. It gives that a, lot. a really good heelish vibe. It does. Um, I I think. I mean, there there was something about the reveal at World's End where they were going to hit him with the chair, goes black. And then when the lights come back up, he's just sitting in the chair, head bowed. Like it was, he has to sit because of the, because of the ankle injury, but what a happy accident that you can actually have this. It adds so much because nobody else sits in a folding chair while giving promos in the ring. This makes him unique. It adds this, this air of nonchalance of, of, I don't, I don't even need to stand to address you. He can't stand because of the ankle. But if you don't, if you're not looking at the ankle, it just gives off better than you, baby. You know what I mean? There's this really cool thing there. I like it a lot. To Dong Fallis, if you do have another super chat to send, uh, you don't have to send a super chat. Just comment something else uh, in our comment box, and Luis will pick it up for you. But again, we've just covered that exhaustively and have no new information to provide there. Bullet Club Gold and the acclaim to target the Undisputed Kingdom. Uh, I saw some people that were like, eh, is this their first feud? Well, MJF is gone. They said he's not coming back, which isn't true. He'll be back. He's, he's be taking back. time away. Yeah, um, he's got an injury to rehab. like Serious injury. Yeah, like, so uh, he'll, when, he, when he's healthy, he'll come back. The level of pain in which that guy was in last week was unbelievable from what I, I i had people saying that they were shocked he could even drop the tag titles like he was they were shocked he could get through that and i thought he put on a good match with samoa joe and a good story as well um with the acclaimed i saw you mention that you'd be for it if they dropped the trios titles but i don't know if they will here based on the, the designation that everybody has i we'll see. You know, their their involvement made sense though because they have been attacked bullet club gold have been attacked so right. these people had to come come back for vengeance. They had to. Oh sure, but I but um but acclaimed coming back to to get vengeance on the on on the the devils as well as Jay White coming out and cutting a promo. I actually love what you did to MJF, but what I don't yeah. like is being collateral damage in your little plot, which is great. This is this is the kind of. Wrapping up loose ends in a story that needs to be done across the board in every wrestling promotion. Like, Jay White would hate um, Adam Cole, but also, Jay White and the Guns have no love for the acclaimed. They're not going to like, hey, us six against those three guys, we'll beat them up together. They don't like each other. So what I'm thinking is we might get a, a three corners trios match somewhere in there where the devils don't factor in the decision. 
and we get Jay White and the guns, especially with juice out, putting a title around the waist of Jay White is always a good idea. And I do think that the acclaimed, though they remain over, um, haven't done anything as trios champs. I thought that they told a really good story leading up to them taking the titles from House of Black at All In. But since then, it's been like five months and they've done nothing as champs. So I'm kind of ready for that reign to end and do something brand new with it. We're doing a lot of resets. Reset that too. Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Bootable saying, I'll happily die on this hill alone, but think the best story is for Cody to never win the title. No, that is not the best story because we already did that story. It was I called know. his entire All Elite Wrestling run. Right. We've already done that one. Tom Lavalley says the chair can be for Cole and to wail on someone. True. And Eric says Adam Cole is the only one uh, that I know uh, made Jay White turn face. Yeah, I mean, Jay White is enough of a son of a bitch to where, <laughs> to where it, it's it's hard to do that, but. He did it. Orange Cassidy defeated Dante Martin, the international title. Uh, this is sort of, you know, our return to that Orange Cassidy run. And who knows if this yeah. second one was ever really supposed to happen. Right. But, you know, a series of events unfolded and we ended up getting uh, Dante Martin and, you know, some stuff after that. But what did you think of the match uh, itself? Well, you know, I'm so, it's so good to have Dante back and looking like old Dante. That was one of those things where you look at that injury that he suffered and go, mm -hmm. I wonder if he's ever going to be able to be the the kid that we thought he was like, because he was he's still so young, but he was so young doing this amazing stuff in the ring in AEW. And then the injury happened. It was so gruesome. And people, some people just never recover from a thing like that. Um, and he's back and he looks like he still has that bright future ahead of him. Um, and this was a lot of fun, but you know, Orange Cassidy is still uh, bulletproof. Uh, for, for a while, it looks like. I'm, I don't know what the plans are for this because, as you said, it, he may never have gotten that title back if it not, had not been for the Mox head injury against Phoenix. So there's there's a lot to, to like about this match and about them giving Dante Martin a spotlight. Um, and I, I do like the idea, just on paper, of at least the feud between OC and Roddy Strong, if not putting the title on Roddy Strong as well. Private party, you're back. And it made me very happy to hear this reaction. By the way, FightfulSelect.com. Best $5 in the business. Uh, let you know uh, about a month or so ago that Mark Quinn was good to go. Uh, AEW has a pretty exhaustive process right now for clearing up, uh, clearing talent and it, it for, that have been gone for a while. So Mark Quinn, it, it did take a while. Sawyer says private party called out the Bucks. Anything to read into that? Return soon. I, I would imagine sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, so glad Quinn is back. Missed that entrance. Well, the crowd was very happy. They did not forget who private party were. They were welcoming him back. Uh, this this was just good to see a team that we thought already would have reached heights that it just hasn't yet. Mm -hmm. They also called out the Hardys, who obviously they have been connected to for quite some time. I, I was just happy to see this. Uh, I love private party. I think it's really cool. We, let's, let's rebuild this tag division as well. Let's, let's get a bunch of people in there that are feel like real tag teams. Um, and, and have do, yeah, do let's do a tag team turmoil or something to get, to get tag title, to get, um, uh, tag contenders that just for my sake, aren't Jericho related. And, yeah. and then, and then we could, um, get uh, Big Bill and Ricky, who I love, doing more stuff on both shows because the the tag titles, AEW was a, a lot of it was founded on amazing tag team wrestling, and I believe that Ricky and Big Bill can do that kind of wrestling, and they're just floating, not doing anything right now. So I want I want to see them do more. Yeah, because of the the Kenny Omega stuff, there hasn't been a ton of follow up for. Right. what Ricky and big bill are doing outside of, you know, making, making some jokes. I mean, the, the big bill thing uh, last week talking about diverticulitis was pretty funny, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I, I want to see more of a focus on that, even though Ricky should be a single star uh, right now. And you know what? I'd also love to see the tag team division restored to where 
when two people were in the tag team division, it wasn't a step back. Like Kenny Omega right. and Hangman were there. Yeah. And we oh, would go, sure. hell yeah. It's just how things have been of late. And I'm sure that mm-hmm. in their mind, they looked at Jericho and Omega and thought, okay, two former world champions. We're really, yeah. it's just, there's, there's been such a, uh, so, you know, and, uh, with that for a yeah. while, and it hasn't been booked that way. The acclaimed were not booked that way. The guns were not booked that way as like top, top guys. Uh, Swerve yeah. and our glory had some slapper matches, but you know, their reign wasn't long enough for them to be booked that way. Right. Meet Normus says I was at the first dynamite where private party beat the bucks really thought they would have won the belts by now. Yeah. And in some instances, situations beyond their control, but I, I feel like there, there is a little something that they need to really explode sure. sort of like what we saw with Tony storm, like what we saw years ago with swerve, a little something mm-hmm. that will make them reach that next level. Yeah. Balab says shot, 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 shot. So glad to see Quinn finally back. Restore the feeling yeah. in the tag division. House of Black are trying to restore the feeling. We saw Buddy and uh, Malachi talking. Alex, I couldn't hear much of what Malachi said because the music was so damn loud. Yeah, it was weird. Um, he basically, the 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 threat lev- uh, levied here by House of Black guarantees that they lose the match on uh, on on Saturday, which I always hate when they do that, because honestly, I I wouldn't I would not have uh, objected to see a long feud between these two and maybe more and more of this. But FTR, when they lose, so saith Malachi, they will have to disown their families and anyone that they love and join the House of Black. And I feel like that's not a thing that's going to happen. So FTR is winning in North Carolina, as they probably should. Um, but I think this match is going to be amazing and we'll see where, where that goes after that. We also had the Tony storm interview before Mariah May's match. She is going out on the town. Uh, Dong Fallis says I was at world's end least favorite AEW pay-per-view. And this is one of my favorite dynamites. Uh, likewise, likewise, uh, it says, do you think TK will start booking hot acts like swerve or storm and swerve against heels crowd dynamics were off. Um, I think Swerve will be against people that are are borderline. He's he's gonna get babyface reactions though. Yep. Yep. But against Hangman, I think he'll get the appropriate reaction. Right. Uh we'll Tony see. Storm. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I say we'll see. Like that guy's incredibly over in a in a way that very few people who even lean heel ever are. Um Again, he th- he implied threatening murder on Hangman's infant. I do not know if he's actually ever going to get booed. Um, yeah, there's there's some there's some really good stuff, but I also think that there's there's ways of doing that because Swerve is just too confident to care who he's fighting, heel face whatever, and. Tony Storm literally doesn't know what day of the week it is. Put somebody in front of her, have her cut a promo on them and fight them. Like there's a lot of great stuff you can do with them as tweeners for very different reasons. I hope that they figure out a way to, to get them the appropriate response in that way. Let me tell you about what I liked. Mariah May against uh, Queen Aminata. Queen Aminata, who has been out of the ring for quite a while up until like last Mm -hmm. month Mm -hmm. had wrestled on rampage before. Um, has been associated with AEW for quite some time, but this was her first Dynamite match. And if you're going to lose your first Dynamite match, this is how you do it. Uh, This was to be a showcase for Mariah May, and I saw a lot of people talking about Queen Amanada as well. This was great. Eloquent says, need that graphic as well. Matthew Hook says, Mariah May is a star. AEW feels refreshed. GT Gear says, Mariah May is amazing. When can we expect Mercedes? I have to be careful about what I say. Because if I just say something, people will re- say it is fact, which mm-hmm. we're going to get into. And I will address that with the Deanna thing. Sawyer says, AEW is firing on all cylinders tonight. Every segment was a home run, except for the Mariah match, which was quickly saved by the Virtuosa. Sawyer, I disagree. I love this match. I thought uh, they knocked really the good. living shit out of each other, Alex. Yeah. 
Mariah May hit a drop kick in the in the first third of the match. I was like, "Where did that come from?" That front drop kick where uh, Queen Amanada sold it with such a snap, and oh. then Amanada just smacked the shit out of her repeatedly yes, to the point yeah. to where my wife goes, "I didn't even know if she knew this term." She goes, "Was that a receipt?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, oh, fantastic, fantastic. oh my heart!" Oh, One of those. fantastic. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ryan says Mariah versus Zamanata was match of the night. Great action. Crowd loved it. Then the Deanna debut. TK has two more gems for the Women's Continental Classic Infinity Gauntlet. Feels like we're headed that way with the returns, debuts, and signings. I don't even know if we were headed that way, but this might be one of those times where Tony looks at it and Tony is a tournament happy Tony is what I'll call him. To the point to where I'm like, no more tournaments throughout the year. Just the Owen, just the Continental Classic. Yeah. Think of something else. Think of another way because yeah. you can't keep doing tournaments except another Continental Classic for the women. So he might look at that and say, hell yeah, brother. But I love this match. It did what Mariah May needed to do. It highlighted Queen Avenada. And that's before we even get to the post match, Alex. Right. Um, I think that. Um... I think Queen Amanada is very promising. A lot of really great stuff. And we will see if they use her more in this way. There's when you when, somebody like a Queen Amanada at the, at the stage of her career, at the stage of her, her being in, in on dark and all this kind of stuff for years, and in being in this spot, if it was a male talent, we'd be like, are we we're gonna see them signed? What what is this the beginning of a storyline of they can't quite get over the hump and then they do? But because we see these women come in, have a great short match, look really good, lose to the talent that's actually signed, and they go away. You know, will we start to see if they actually start expanding this women's division? And listen, you sign Perrazzo. If you do sign Mercedes Monet, you're not going to get away with doing one match on Dynamite and one match on Collision and one match on Rampage. I don't think Rampage. it will be. Uh, you're not going to get away with that anymore. So the other feuds will be demanding screen time. So I think then you actually having somebody like Queen Amada who you can bring in, maybe sign and use and have maybe as part of a stable of women or, or they're there to actually wrestle often to get, know you're going to get a good match out of the, the, the person you're actually telling the story with because Queen Amanada is in there with her. Good stuff. And I mean, this is like, this is like with Billy Starks and Athena just chilling on ROH. I know, man. <laughs> just chilling on ROH. Yep. This is with, you know, I like Trisha Dora has been an ROH like semi regular for a while. Lady Frost is just chilling on ROH right now. They have talent that is, is waiting. And uh, yeah, Oscar says it is really dope to feel excited about what's to come with the women's division. Highlights in the ring were Mariah May and Takeshita for me. Oh, yeah. And Aminata is on ROH tomorrow as well. So tune in to our ROH post-show here on Fightful. So Mariah May gets on the microphone and trashes New Jersey. Which Tony Storm has already done as well. Which Tony Storm has already done. Uh, so, I mean, she's just trying to live up to uh, mm -hmm. Tony. And Deanna Perrazzo's new music hits. Mm -hmm. FightfulSelect.com, the best $5 in the business, reported today that AEW was Deanna Perrazzo's preferred landing spot, mm -hmm. and they had been in talks. We will talk about the media literacy aspect of this first, because on mm -hmm. Monday, actually on Friday, I reported that Mercedes Monet and WWE were no longer in talks. This came straight from the company. And... You know, they said that they walked away from talks because the terms are too far apart. People close to Mercedes said that they got lowballed. Big shocker. That's what happens whenever a conversation can't reach a, an agreement. One sure. side thinks they got lowballed. The other one thinks that they're unrealistic. Mm -hmm. It's what happens. It doesn't speak to anybody's character or anything like that. Couldn't come to terms. Guess who also couldn't come to terms? A month ago. AEW and Mercedes were not had not come to terms. We'd reported that as of that time, the original working plans that we heard of were no longer in effect. That has changed. And as of this past weekend, Mercedes yeah. was expected by sources within TNA, WWE, and AEW 
as well as many others around the industry to head to AEW. I had heard some chatter that maybe tonight could be the night. However, I want to make this clear. At no point, no point did Fightful ever report that. At no mm-hmm. point, to my knowledge, did anyone on Fightful say, oh, you got to watch this Wednesday because that, that's why. I No, I wouldn't have said that because here's the thing. I don't know, and up until the day of, still won't know. Until I see a rundown or maybe a talent tells me or something like that, I won't know somebody's popping up on the right. show. I always thought, personally, Daly's Place was a more likely landing spot because of Tony's affinity for that and making those shows sure. feel special. This is yeah. not me reporting that that is happening, but to mm-hmm. me, that makes an awful lot of sense. I also had said something on the uh, What Do You Guys Want to Talk About podcast today that got clipped into 50-second clips, and people said, oh, backtracking, because I said, until she signs the contract, you just never say never on anything. Right. And that's just common sense. I yeah. Hey, here, here, you know what? I can't spoil that one because that's a story I'm going to release this weekend. <laughs> uh, I was about to, to, okay, there was another wrestler who had uh-huh. agreed to terms with the company and said, yeah, I'll, I'll, st- I'll go here. And then they said, nope, at the last minute and wow. went elsewhere. That can happen. It can always mm-hmm. happen. I don't know officially that she signed on the dotted line. I right. know that as of right now, the working plan. Well, okay. As of this week, the working <laughs> plan, because again, I don't know right now. I don't got somebody texting me right this moment saying right. it. As of this week, the working plan was for Mercedes to go into AEW unless something falls through. Something now, different. there are some people that are like, oh, you're too vague. You're, you're trying to cover all your bases. No shit, Sherlock, because I don't speak in absolutes. I ain't fucking Miss Cleo for the fifth time. No. Like, I, I don't have my eyes on the contract, so I can't sit here and say, yes, she is absolutely signed. Nobody from AEW has told me that she has signed. What they have told me is there's a working plan to use her. So that's what we report. Because right. if you go along and you say something that isn't, well, it's a lot harder to explain when something falls through or somebody right. comes back and say, says, oh, that's not exactly how it happened. We report it in a manner in which is safe to report. And uh, there are some people who are like, oh, well, why don't you wait until until you do know that it's signed? We're talking about pro wrestling here. This ain't the war, okay? We're not talking about the Jeff Epstein list here. We're talking about pro wrestling contracts. Chill. (sighs) Ah, brother. I agree with you, SRS. Women's World Tag Belts this year, once Mercedes joins the company, defended across strong AOA or AEW and ROH. Yeah, that's what I wanted is world women's tag titles. That way they're defended across ROH, yeah. AEW. That'd and be a good like. idea. I like it. Deanna Perrazzo. Uh, somebody said Jeff Epstein sounds too casual. It's the reference to the, the Conan skit, guys. Yeah. The, the Conan O'Brien skit. Yeah. Deanna Peraza's out there, and it made me so happy. I'm so happy for her. It made me so happy. Yeah. Um, we had her last interview before, uh, before she became a free agent. And she was very excited to be a free agent again. Yeah. And it spoke very highly of the locker room in Impact Wrestling and all that. This was her home ta- or, or her home state. Mm-hmm. Had a sm- had a suspicion she wanted to debut here as well because I mean, it's something special to her. Steve Macklin was in uh, in the crowd watching her as Kimmy yeah. Sokol uh had had posted that wonderful picture. But there were Deanna Chance, there were New Jersey Chance. And um, she told Mariah May that she was coming for Tony Storm. 
And Mariah said, I'm not her messenger. Why don't you tell her, bitch? And then slapped her in the face mm-hmm. and he ate a filthy big filthy boot. Kid. Filthy, filthy kid. big boot. Oh, my God. This was so good. This yes. was so good. And I was so happy. Um, I, I love debuting her here on Dynamite, especially in New Jersey here uh, because of this amazing pop that she got. Uh, that's awesome. And if indeed they debut Mercedes next week in Daly's place, like what a dual shot to the arm for, um, you just got Thunder Rosa back. Um, we, we anticipate, I'm assuming a return of a Jamie Hayter in the future, a, a Britt Baker in the future. They've got this really great roster and, um, two current champions who are super over in different ways. There's a lot, a lot to like here. I'm so excited for this. And uh, something that I tweeted today. Best case scenario, they've got Deanna. They also get Mercedes. They're getting back Serena and Thunder Rosa. Yeah, Deeb coming back too, yeah. Britt and Jamie on the horizon. Boy, that is an awful lot. That is an awful lot to add. And uh, from what I understand, if Mercedes was to come into the company, there'd be like the Mercedes segment and the and an additional right. women's segment. And Simmons says, when they announced next week they're at Daily Place, I thought, okay, that's probably where she debuts. If she doesn't show up, then it's up in the air. Yeah, if she if Mercedes isn't on next week's Dynamite, then I've got no real idea. Uh, <laughs> idea. Uh, uh, about that and I yes to clear text- to clarify because people were weirded out by the jeff epstein thing yes it is a very popular clip where a guy pretends to not know <laughs> what happened to jeffrey epstein jeff epstein the new york jeff- financier ha! no good no one. Ha! no <laughs> good good try though <laughs> it was no, classic jeff- it was good shit no um no i uh i yeah i think that um uh, if, if I saw some chatter online from some people who were like, uh, Mercedes is too big to debut on a dynamite. You have to do it at a pay-per-view. And I was like, you're going to wait until March to do it. You're going to wait all the way until March. Cause that's their next pay-per-view. Yeah. I don't think you're going to wait that long. It, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, yeah. You want to, you want people to be conditioned to tune into your show. And when they were like, Oh no, you got to save it for a pay-per-view. No, you don't. What you do is, you put it on a dynamite because that's what you're selling the media rights package of right now. Yes, that's true. Oh, man. Eloquent says, booking idea. OC op- issues an open challenge. Ali accepts and defeats OC and presents, proceeds to defend it on his world tour. I love that idea, Eloquent. I absolutely love that. I think that's great. Yep. And I don't think it's that unrealistic. Mm. Nicholas says, I was so disappointed when PW Insider said there's no plan with WWE and TNA. I asked somebody in WWE and they just told me they didn't have that information right now, mm. unfortunately. Uh, and says, also, when do you expect a new uh, WWE Raw rights? Because the stock is stuck at about 80. So a conversation that I had with somebody in WBD was like, well, they got to make sure they get the right deal because the SmackDown deal did not help their stock. I mean, their stock is lower now than it was before they merged the company with WWE. So super chat is just for the genius. That's Jim Downey. There you go. Yep. There you go. Uh, We got somebody saying, oh gosh, Connor McFlogger says, People hate me for saying this, but I'm not a fan of Mercedes. I've seen firsthand how she treats fans. I don't understand how she thinks she can command a huge salary after a brief New Japan run uh, because she is objectively a big star. Now, I don't know what you mean about treating fans. If you I mean was, at the know. airport, uh, get screwed because anybody that sits at the airport for autographs is a fucking creep and yeah. a weirdo and should be treated like shit. Uh, go somewhere else. Go to a signing. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. King of the North says, bring me deadly draw and tag medals back. I do not want those damn tag medals. I I was, I was like, what the hell are we doing? Even when they did the medals back then. Yeah, man. NY says Deanna Peraza versus everyone. 
Yes, please, and thank you. I mean, Deanna Perrazzo, I, I don't know. I don't know what AEW offered him. I know that originally her deal was going to be up at the beginning of last year. They picked up an option because they had given her a raise of some sort. But there was a world where she probably could have ended up here WWE a year ago. But she has been one of the most consistent performers in AEW. Her and Jordan Grace put on some incredible matches. They they really found one another there over their, their several years. Uh, but a lot of the stuff she did kicked up some buzz for AEW as well and main eventing pay-per-views and the like. RJ says, any update on Camille? Uh, yeah, there were several reports, I believe House of Wrestling and PW Insider, that said um, that she's on WWE's radar. Christian Cage, State of the Union. Uh, Shanna Wayne did the full-on Rocco's Modern Life, How Dare You Again. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And Christian Cage took aim at Adam Copeland. And uh, I don't know what Luchasaurus Killswitch was doing in the background, but I noticed he was barking. He was going repeatedly. He's a a dinosaur. (laughs) That's part of his culture. A literal dinosaur. It is. Okay, fair. (laughs) I mean. So it's like us. It's like us whites just spreading the mayo. (laughs) That's right. We That's just right. slab mayo all over everything mm-hmm. while while yes. our friends are cutting promos. Yes. What did you think of uh, Christian Cage's promo? Um, uh, listen, I I think different differing than you. I loved the first Shayna Wayne promo. Yes. If she's going to do it the same every time, it's going to have very quick diminishing returns. But I did love the first one. Um, it was uh, the the exact same. I did love the first one. Didn't love the second one because it was exactly the same. But I, I did love, um, by the way, it's one of the greatest heel moments in the history of wrestling to me was what he did at, at World's End, where he stepped in front of the ref to steal the money in the bank contract thing from, from Luchasaurus and whispered something into his ear that made him forlornly handed over. And then, and then he just cashed in right on the guy, his longtime best friend and rival, who had just beaten him two minutes prior. What a uh, what a great what a great moment! So to him, then say, I want to thank the guy who who laid the final nail in the coffin of, of Adam Copeland, who who secured my victory to become champion. Me myself, that's right. I'm the only person I want to thank for that. I was like, oh, that was great. This is this was this was a lot of fun and. And I hope the I hope this is a shoot. I want I would love for them to circle back later, but for now, let's get Christian doing some other things because I think there's a lot more cool feuds for him to have that's not just Copeland over and over again. Guys, please leave a thumbs up on this video. I can't tell you how much that helps us. Uh, also, we want to tell you about our great partner at Bet Online, which is flipping up around Alex's. Little head right there. They have the earliest lines. Their odds opens before the competition. You can bet big with the highest limits and rebet functionality. They have the fastest payouts uh, with winnings paid in minutes and the industry's best bonuses on every qualifying deposit. They've been trusted for 25 years, so it's not some fly-by-night company. And this is the place where we have gotten our odds for years and years, like uh, anytime you see me post anything on Twitter or anything on Fightful about odds related to wrestling, it is from Bet Online. It's safe and secure with their online environment. It's got the highest credit card acceptance. Right now, you can go check odds for the MLW show. What other website are you going to find that has MLW odds? My dude Akira favored to beat Ricky Shane Page. We got Janai Kai odds. Janai Kai betting odds. At Bet Online AG. She is a minus 1,000 favorite. Alex Kane is a minus 5,000 over Richard Holiday. No respect for Richard Holiday, but I'll give you a, a fun little, little story from the World's End show. Somebody showed up uh, after our Bet Online AG read and said, You convinced me that Samoa Joe was going to win the title tonight, and I paid for my New Year's Eve drinks <laughs> as a result <laughs> of that. Look at that. So, Bet online AD probably looking at me on that show, foaming at the mouth, mad, ready to mm. square up, mm-hmm. saying, We're already working with you. Why are you costing us money too? Because that's what I do. That's what <laughs> I do. 
Satoshi Kojima <laughs> with a minus 160. Sammy Callahan, a plus 120. Jacob Fatu is a plus 250 if he even shows up. If he even shows up. Check it out, guys. BetOnline.ag uh, from football, baseball, basketball, golf, soccer, tennis, all kinds of stuff. Lots of great same-game parlays as well. Terry Allen Jr. says, what style of wrestling do you both adore? Um, I like watching uh, more high-flying stuff, but I don't want to say more high-flying stuff because there's a lot of things that I go, that doesn't make sense. I, I like wrestling a, a catch-as-catch-can style, personally, but that's not as exciting for a lot of people to watch. Alex, what's, what's your favorite? Um, I like wrestling that makes sense. That is, that is, I'll, I'll, any kind of wrestling, technical grappling style, two big hosses banging into each other, guys flipping all over the place. I love wrestling where I go, that move logically led to that move and that, and you're telling the story in, in the ring of the size difference or the experience difference. Honestly, I'm really easy to please as long as the match, as long as there's some urgency from both guys. There don't have to be like stakes involved, but as long as both both guys, both women have urgency and they're telling a cohesive story, I'm 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 in on it. But if you ask me like narrow it down, whatever Brian Danielson does, that's 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 the thing for me. Patrick says any update on the Wendy Richter contract news. That was a great line. That was a phenomenal line. That was uh, Nicholas says with Naomi expected to be back in WWE. Will she be a free agent in time for the rumble? Could see her and Bianca as a mania match as well. I could see that. Um, I think it's possible. She could be in the rumble. I, it was implied to me that maybe Trinity had one or two more sets of tapings. Uh, I don't know specifically when, but as of now, WWE expects to be working with her again and wants to be and told me that unless something falls through, that's the plan. Anything can happen until they sign on that dotted line. That's free agency season, my friends. Boris says Mariah is legit. Her versus Hater at all in LFG. I think we'll have to see who is over to what level around them. Jake says, I hope that Christian, Christian whispered, I know what killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> BB says as someone who doesn't follow wrestling outside the two main companies, how should AEW introduce people like Mariah or Donna Deanna to wider audiences? I think the way they've introduced Mariah is perfect. She is yeah. a, she is a wrestler who adores another wrestler mm -hmm. and they don't shy away from her experience. Right. Uh, Deanna being presented as someone who would immediately go for a top title is right. how they should present her is, is, and, as a top main event talent. And it was an incredible um, choice to debut her in New Jersey, where if you're watching at home and you don't know who she is because you don't watch Impact, um, uh, you see the crowd go crazy for her. And you immediately perk up and go, oh, she must be a big deal, even though if I don't know about her. But you can find ways of, of de debuting people that may not be known by a very, very wide audience as long as you do it in the right way. All of a sudden, people will take stand up and take note. Uh, Tim McFowl says the best heels tell the truth. Great stuff from Cole. All the Wardlow stuff were, was gold. His facial expressions rock. Uh, we're seeing a lot of those out of Harley Cameron as well. <laughs> uh, and Ruby was like, you know, I wasn't sure how the, the goofy blonde in our group would work out, but you know what? She's doing all right. And Sarah is like, see, see, I'm good at this. Yeah. This, this has quickly grown on me. Yep. I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying uh, this. Any, any uh, we'll see. The only thing that I've seen is this, and then the one where she came out with the with the butcher knife. So uh, I, I do love, I do love Saray being like you're you're being too obvious about it after Ruby leaves, and Renee's like, what is going on? And and Saraya being like, Renee, you know I love you, but shut up right now, okay? And like I, I honestly love this interplay. I don't know exactly what what's happening here. But I, I, I think it can be fun. This is, these are the kind of things that get these women on TV. They're, they're slowly building these stories that are, I believe are going to lead to something with matches and, and, uh, and storylines expanding in a way. This is good. Uh, we've got, ba actually, Monique says, 
Mercedes is the biggest free agent in wrestling. Shouldn't AEW tease her debut like Adam Punk, etc.? Not just have her show up on a random dynamite. It's okay. So Monique, I I agree. I don't think that you're wrong here. I, I there's two ways that you can weigh it. The spontaneous anything can happen. You have to watch this show, or the this is what's happening. You better watch this show mm-hmm. type of thing. I don't think that either one are wrong, but it's a decision that you're faced with as a promoter all the time. Right. Alex, what would you do? I um I see both sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it were me, I would wonder if it might be interesting like this Saturday on Collision to do some kind of vignette where you never see her face kind of a kind of if you can if again, if she signed and you know she signed and you have her and you can you can work this up with her some vignette where you don't see her face. She, you play music. Mm-hmm. You just you hear her laugh or whatever. And then pff, Wednesday and everyone's tuning in to see that. Like and because you you do run one on on TNT and the other one on TBS, they're the same company, so both company the the, the co- same company gets the gets the bump in ratings. Maybe it's something like that where you're not being very overt about it. You're just teasing something. But I also the 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 pop of holy crap! I can't believe I'm here for this from the crowd is always to me like a really cool thing to to experience at home watching. So I don't know. Shot Kid says, Harley is the serial killer robot from Futurama. That's a good shout as well. Yeah. Dong Fallis says, I love how everyone Cole effed over is looking for receipts. Yeah. Yeah, they are. And uh, (laughs) while I let my cat out. Oh, man. Are you telling me I don't have this read on here? Damn it. Man, my, my cat's just sitting over here like, <laughs> hey, bro, why don't uh-huh. you let me out? Why, uh-huh. like, where is he? There he is. Look at him. Aww. He sneaks up here and he uh-huh. sleeps. His name is Kofi, yeah. actually. Hey, Kofi. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. He's like, what? What do you want? No, he just what wants do the door. He, he wants, wants the, door. the door. He wants the door. Um, Man, people are calling me Sean Flop Sap because I, I didn't uh, have the, the ad read up. Yeah. But I do now. Hey, guys, if you know me, you know i got a busy schedule. That's why I'm so happy to tell you about Factormeals.com slash Fightful50. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. It helps me fuel up and stay ready for breakfast, lunch, dinner, especially when I've got a tight schedule. Their fresh, never-frozen meals are prepared in two minutes and just keep you on the go. They also have these great lunch-to-go options that don't require a microwave at all. They've got breakfast options, snack options, dinner options, even high-end gourmet plus options. In addition to that, they have calorie-conscious meals, protein-packed options, and so much more. They also offset 100% of their delivery emissions and source 100% renewable electricity for the production sites and offices. Head over to factormeals.com slash Fightful50 and use the code Fightful50 to get 50% off. This is such a versatile meal kit. 35 plus weekly flavor packed fresh never frozen meals that promote a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences. That's factormeals.com slash Fightful50 to get 50% off. Factormeals.com slash Fightful50. Say 50%. S. Taylor says, what would you label each U.S. company's identity as? Is WDB the number one sports entertainment? GCW the hardcore one for AEW, TNA, MLW, NWA? Ooh. I don't think it's fair to put an identity on a lot of these stuff because they're all yeah. in the same business. That's true. But if I had to, I would probably say New Japan is pretty well strong style wrestling. Yeah. Um, AEW, pro wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, WWE, sports entertainment. But yeah, and I think that a lot of those other ones are a, a mix of those. Yeah. Trent defeated Brian Cage, Brian Keith, Vikingo and Trent. Tim says, Happy New Year, everyone. Any word on if the bounty hunter is all elite? Hope he is. No, but it would make sense. Um, I, I hope more. he is. Yeah. Yeah, they, they've had him popping up and, and all that. But uh, we've also have somebody asking, where's Pac? Is he still under contract? He is, he's sidelined right now. Um, Brian Keith is really great. He ended up taking the pin here, but uh, I enjoyed this match. And Maddie Nice also asked about Pac. 
says I'm teaming uh, Hangman up with Brian Keith and the Von Erics. If I'm Tony, thanks for everything. I don't think that's a fit. Hangman's kind of a loner. He did a whole story about his friends and, and abandoning, you know, it just, I don't know if I want to see that story, so to speak, um, again. Uh, Jamal says, Dan Housen should have cursed that Mark Trent Beretta. What do you think about this match that led to Trent getting the title shot against Eddie? Well, Trent, as Jamal, I'm sure, has super chatted. Um, he's dead to Jamal. Um, he uh, eliminated Dan Housen um, instead of working with Dan Housen to eliminate uh, Luchasaurus. Uh, kill switch at, at, at on the zero hour and Jamal will never forgive him for that but it appears that Danhausen has because the Danhausen came into the ring to curse Brian Cage um so that the guy who eliminated him from the number one contendership battle royal could get the victory so mm -hmm. looks like Danhausen is really a very good friend he's uh, at least willing to forgive um Trent versus by the way Eddie Kingston on commentary is just so amazing like they the, this is what i love about, about aw they have all of these amazing color commentators who are masquerading as wrestlers or not masquerading but like hidden within a wrestler daddy magic's doing fantastic work whenever he's on commentary um eddie kingston is brilliant at it chris jericho sucks but there's all these other ones who are so good at doing the commentary when they get on danielson was a revelation Doing doing commentary for the Mox and Eddie match. Um, I loved Eddie here. Um, he was, oh no, like he could see things coming. He was like hoping his fellow wrestlers didn't get hurt because he could see what was about to happen. Yeah, I loved watching this match through Eddie's eyes. And Trent versus Eddie's gonna be great. Alan says, uh, how is the Continental Crown defended? Is each title defended separately? Then when the tourney comes around, whoever's holding the three titles is automatically in the tournament. Brother, your guess is as good as mine, and they have not exactly been transparent about all that, but saying that the titles are defended separately. All I've heard, all I heard today, was that Vikingo comes down wearing his belt, and Shivani says if he wins this match, he has a chance to add three more title belts to his, to his, uh, it was person that if he wins this, he gets a shot against Eddie for all of the belts at once. And I thought they were de de defended separately, oh boy. but they said, if you, if you win the match versus Eddie, if Trent wins versus Eddie, he gets all three belts. And I did not realize that was, that was the, uh, that was the case. Yeah. That was confusing because they specifically said the continental championship I need I need some clarity there, or maybe I need to pay attention better. One or the other. GT Gear says, uh, "How many major debuts have there been at Daly's place?" Well, a lot of them because that's where they were sort of forced to be. But Sting, yeah. FTR, Andrade, Eddie Kingston, Matt Hardy, yeah, like th there's quite a few of them that were there considered major. Then I consider Kanske Takeshita and uh, Darby Allen major. This is one of my favorite things I've ever seen on Dynamite, Alex. This was Takeshita beating the living shit mm -hmm. out of Darby Allen. He caught uh, caught Darby Allen on a suicide dive with a, knee, a big man. knee. Holy cow. Uh, somebody says Matt Hardy was New York. My bad. My bad. But anyway, holy crap, man. This was just phenomenal. This was so good. It was Takeshita throwing Darby around, beating the shit out of him. When I saw that top rope German, I was like, surely not. Surely not. Uh -huh. And then it happened. And then what happened after that? He pinned him, cleaned as a sheet. Yep. Yeah. Hit that knee. Hit that knee and, and pinned him. Um, uh, listen, Takeshita there is doing. there is no bigger fan of Darby Allen than me when he loses. There, there is, there is something that 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 guy does in these matches where he just he take he takes a beating like nobody else, like nobody else. The problem I have with it is when he takes that beating and then somehow wins anyway, because I do not feel like he inflicts enough damage on the other person to believably score a victory after taking the beating that he takes. Takeshita, separately from that, is a, an absolute star. Like in the ring, there's very few people like him who can move with his alacrity and have his strength. Um, 
I am super, super excited to see where this, this 2024 could be the year of fill in the blank with a lot of different people. Swerve, Garcia, Takeshita. Like there's a bunch of people who you could say this is going to be it. And it may not be this year. 2025 may be the year of Takeshita where he's the champ for like nine months. There's a lot of really cool stuff they can do with this. I'm I'm just such a huge fan of his. I thought that after he got the victory over mm -hmm. Omega, they were going to strap a rocket to his ass yeah. and fire him into the sun. And there was the thing with Jericho for a bit, and then that just faded, and I haven't seen them do a lot. Next week, we're going to get Hobbs and Takeshita versus Darby and Sting, and probably either Takeshita or Will Hobbs is getting pinned, probably by Darby. And I'll be angry about that then. But for tonight, I was I loved this match and I loved to catch to getting the victory clean. Tom Lavalley says at this point, Darby has to be considered AEW's ace. I mean, he has done everything they've asked for him. Mm -hmm. Everything they've asked of him. Yep. Photo says, what a freaking match. How is Darby alive? I feel like I have asked that question so many times. Yeah. Ryan Ben says, I told Luis Takeshita versus Oba is now my dream match. That sounds like that's that's <laughs> sicko. That's sicko stuff. <laughs> I'm the sicko. A, I'm, the sicko. I'm the sicko outside the window going, ah, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who do you see Sting putting over at Revolution? I know that he's going to have a major say in it, uh, mm -hmm. but it'll be a tag team match. And yeah, almost certainly. Whoever whoever he wants is the answer. And I would say right. probably an established tag team. Yeah. Or a tag team that needs established. The knee on the suicide dive. My God, says Tom LaValle. That was mm -hmm. just one of the most disgusting spots I've, I've seen. It got a holy shit chant as well. Yeah. Ben Baker says, was just rewatching All Out. Wondered what happened to Kesha's momentum. Glad to see him booked accordingly. Also, hope BCG get juice back soon. Um yeah, I I try to you know, stay in contact with Juice. He doesn't do social media about recovery and all that. Seems in good spirits, but you know I don't really have any frame of reference for how long he'll right. be out. But I know that his back injury is one that he worked through. Like right. when they had a, the likely tag team match of the year in the Fightful mm -hmm. Awards, fifty eight minutes, he was dealing with a very severe back yeah. injury that entire time. Um, yeah, Hangman Page is back though. And I love that he inter interrupted Daddy Magic's promo. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm here and I'm going to fight somebody. He's like, e e here's what I love. He's going to have issues with Cole and company, but he mm -hmm. specifically pointed out, Joe. Joe had them jump me. Joe had them do that. So that will explain pretty soon uh, if he goes after Joe. That's a specific reason why, which the obvious, he's got a title belt too. Right, too. And the one person he didn't mention was the guy who drank his blood on pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. But that's the guy that saw him. But before that, we got Swerve Strickland defeating Daniel Garcia. There was a wonderful dance-off at ringside that got the crowd going. Had to do it. Prince Nana. Had, Had to do it. Alex. Had to do it. The dance-off was to. great. Um. Yeah, uh, this was this was all kinds of fun. Um, um, Garcia's, um, you know, talking about how he, he says, "What are you going to do when you when you, you be the guy you just can't keep down?" And honestly, he couldn't. He couldn't until like he had to break out another house call after after the swerve stomp didn't finish him off, and the swerve stomp finishes people. Then he had to hit another house call and then break out the JML driver. I love that they have for swerve the super finisher that's not like an avalanche version of his regular finisher it's just like if the the thing he does doesn't work on you he has another thing he can pull out and that's it that's all she wrote you're not picking out of the jml driver and he and he beats garcia um uh i and then he then, then he he acts he gives out the hand to garcia and i honestly th I thought they were going to shake hands and tell nana and it didn't look like it was the plan Swerve laughed in surprise after Nana went for the low blow from behind. Like it wasn't like Swerve had no idea that was going to happen, but he did think it was funny as hell. And then Daddy Magic gets involved and 
like this is this is the year of swerve. Like it I, to me, I do believe it needs to be. We got. Oh, we it's so look at very this guy clearly and, is. Yeah, and he said it. He said Samoa Joe. Yes, uh, I'm coming yes. for you. I love it. Because yeah. uh, he said it. he said I thought I was going to be addressing MJF with this, but mm-hmm. it looks like his body broke. So I'm going after you, Samoa Joe. That's it, man. That's all I need for it. Let's do it. BCR on says anyone else here? Nana say bossiest of bosses. I ball emoji. That's you know what? That's mm-hmm. kind of clever. That's kind of sure. clever. Michael says, I loved seeing Swerve in the main event tonight. Hopefully a sign of more great things for a future world champion. Felt a lot of similarities between Mariah May and Tiffany Stratton overall. Yeah, there, there are. But I mean, Mariah May traveled the world to become sure. a better wrestler. And Tiffany sure. Stratton's doing very good at the PC. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk about Daniel Garcia. He belongs here. He yes, is he very, does. it's like looking at Brian Danielson is almost like a mirror image. And it's so funny because Brian Danielson is like the wrestler's wrestler, but he is also one of the best sports entertainers to ever do it. He has sure. such an unbelievable charisma and a sense of humor that Daniel Garcia also has. And Daniel Garcia has it for this new generation. Look at how he handles himself on Twitter. Guy can drop a three word tweet and go viral on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like he's very smart about that stuff and he gets it. He knows how to use it towards his advantage. And he know he the the similarities are striking, and it is just very very clear that this is a guy we're going to be talking about, Lord willing, for the next twenty years mm-hmm. at the top levels of pro wrestling. And Tony Khan said it's a guy we're going to be seeing a lot more of. Thankfully, yeah. Um, this is the, he's he's great. It's one of those things of he's still again so young himself. There there are kids in middle school right now who are going to come up and have their first matches in AEW when that guy's still in his early 30s. And yeah. and, and he'll be the old head taking them under his wing as part of that storyline if, if he's still yeah. in the company. There's a, there's it's crazy how much time we have left with some of these young people. Um and I'm I'm looking forward to it. Adam Weller says I don't love that swerve stomp. The guy's just sitting up unnaturally in a way we don't see otherwise. Takes me out of it an iota. Yeah, I wouldn't mind him. I mean, he's the JML driver is also very, very good. Yeah, it's great. Uh, but, you know, yeah. Uh, well, somebody said, will Trump appear on Raw leading to the election? No, absolutely no, prob- not. Probably not. No, no chance. Yeah. Anyway, Hangman strolls in, ready to whip ass. And oh my God, I love this is what Swerve. I begged for. This is this is Swerve standing there, not giving a damn. Is the best part of this for me because every other every other guy would like get out of the ring, like no nah, man, I just fin- I just finished a long match. I'm not having a fight with you. And Swerve laughed in his face. This is this is what you've been begging for, as you said. It's Peter versus the chicken. We we need one of these yep. every now and then. These two guys, and here's what I love about it is both these guys want Samoa Joe for different reasons, because Samoa Joe's got the title for Swerve, and for that reason for Hangman, but also because Hangman feels like Samoa Joe hit like gave the green light to have, for him to be taken out. So if, is, that a, is that a triple threat? Is that how Swerve becomes champion? Is it a triple threat? Maybe, I don't know. Do we, these guys have a fight? in a cage match or something to have the right to face Samoa Joe. This is what I talk about. There's all these branching pathways. There's a lot of different things they can choose, but I love that we're, we're starting out this way with these two great rivals beating the absolute crap out of each other because they hate each other. And also because there is a new world champion whose belt they need to take. It's great stuff. Tony Miller says Hangman needs a posse, Brian Keith and Bandito. I wouldn't mind them as backup. Like they're the Sunset Riders. And you know what? Sure. I kind of I kind of dig that as a stable name too. Not a, not a Shit. Bad idea. Not a bad idea. Bury me with my money. <laughs> Jake Neal says, Hangman, I thought I told you to cut those sideburns. Hmm. Oh my God. I did, I did reference the Simpsons because I noticed the, the lighting was much brighter in, in the ring right. for AEW. The old Mr. Burns, 40 watts? What is this, a tanning saloon? 
<laughs> Meet Normus says Hangman Swerve as Peter Griffin versus the Chicken works for me. It should be on site anytime they're in the same city. Yeah. I agree. I, ideally, for me, it would have been with two developing talents that you can right. get into, but I'm completely fine with this as well. And honestly, it's a story you can run back multiple times. Mm -hmm. uh, Taker and Brock did it a little bit. Uh, Bronson and Ivar did it recently a little yeah. bit, but I like this. Dong Fallis says, headed for a three-way with Joe Page and Swerve. I think so. I would and like if that. that. If that's a title match or a, a pay-per-view, whoo. Oh, I'm, yep. I'm hoping it's at Greensboro. I'm going to that just for Sting's thing. Yeah, Probably yeah. won't go to the the four hour scrum afterwards. <laughs> but I'm going for I'm going uh, for Sting. Yeah, and oh, that would be so good. That would be so good. Right. Uh, easy way to keep Swerve chasing without losing. Third page Swerve match booking paradox with this timing. I so I think that maybe a third page swerve matches maybe how we get to the triple threat perhaps like both yeah. of these guys are like okay i want the match no you want the match and then maybe the match doesn't happen or or something happens mm -hmm. to where they both pin each other or, or or the like but man uh it it was a hell of an aew dynamite tonight it was a lot of fun Luis says last call for super chats and humper chats uh, we greatly appreciate all you guys. Uh, Ricardo says, Deanna for women's champ before Mercedes. Give me. It's just I'm interested in seeing what Mercedes would do. Like, where would they have her slotted? What what would be mm -hmm. what would be the thing that she goes after? Mm -hmm. Or like, you, you never know. Like, yeah. would it be, the you know, like a returning Brit cuts a promo and then Mercedes is back? Like. Maybe there, there's a lot of ways they could go if they didn't want to make it a title match. Her against Brit is certainly a marquee sure. level match. Yeah. Um, I think there's there's a lot of ways you can do that. But yeah, is the collision set the new main set? I'm gonna find out about this, but I liked mm. the updated look. Me I too. Like the I, fresh I like it a lot. Alex, what do you got going on fightfulselect.com? Obviously, uh, yes, a big yeah. uh, going going really well. We got free agent news all week. Mm -hmm. uh, Fightful Select uh, will be uh, doing the, the Rampage watch along, talking about SmackDown on, on Friday, talking about um, Collision. Looks like a really good one this Saturday as well. Monday, talking Raw, um, and seeing what we, what, what's going on with CM Punk is back. He took two weeks off. He, he was so tuckered out from not doing anything his first couple nights on Raw. He decided to take two weeks off. He was and backstage back. on January 1st. Like, why not have him interact with somebody backstage? It's so no weird to me. But we'll talk about that on on uh, uh, on Monday. Tuesdays, obviously, on this free channel, the NXT review. Um, and then it uh, looks like we're going to be trying, starting it out maybe once, maybe twice a month on Select as well. Uh, Kate and I have a new thing called This Is Cinema? Where we review movies starring wrestlers. Uh, the, our first one was kind of a double episode because we reviewed both of the ridiculous faith-based movies starring Chris Jericho that were on Up TV this past fall. Just absolute dreck. Um, and I, I think we're trying to do this month Money Plane. We're, we're starting out. We're starting out hot. We're going with Money Plane. So look for that on Fightful Select, a oh new show from the Sour Graps people uh, every month on uh, on Fightful Select. Guys, thank you all so much. I'm going to swing by the SmackDown post show on Friday. Uh, maybe the Impact post show or ROH post show, depending on whatever this Triple H announcement is. But I got my Q&A on Fightful Select this week, and the free agency news is going to continue globally. $5 a month, $54 a year. Please leave a thumbs up. Until next time, we're out.